Dragontown Dan here, and on the line with me is Tiffany Lowe. Now, I need to set the stage for us, Tiffany, and this is, uh, I guess, an official bio. You've got a background in modern dance, gymnastics, fire play, method acting, acrobatics, performing live with, of course, uh, Avenged Sevenfold, chief choreographer, fire breather, and dancer with Jenna Torturers, and, of course, uh, with Alice Cooper on the Theater of Death Tour and doing all the crazy stuff around the world with that. Multi-talented, to say the least. Now, that's your official bio. Can I give you Can I give you a better intro that nobody can top? <laughs> that that one's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? Um, how about, I, how about I, this? How, how about supercalifragilisticticknialidocious? How about that? I like that, too. You know, hey, whatever works. It's catchy, you know. I'm into it. It's a lot shorter as well. <laughs> it is, it's succinct. So with such a ubiquitous performance background, how would you describe Tiffany Nalo, the artist, and, and what you do and what you bring to the stage? Well, you know, the thing about it with me is is I learned how to do all of this random stuff, like, over year, over the years I've acquired it. And um, it's just I've always, like, okay, I wanted to learn how to breathe fire. And that's a really funny story. Like, uh, no one I knew could do it. So what I did was is I went online and I read all these forms and all these documents and did all this research about the right way to do it. And Calico was actually at my house. She was like, this is not a good idea. And I was like, yeah, it is. It's going to be awesome. I learned how to do it off YouTube. I watched a video on YouTube and actually figured out how to do it because I just wanted <laughs> to learn so bad. I wanted to be able to do something no one else could do. And I thought it was cool. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. So the first time we went, um, it was an epic fail. We tried this baking soda thing, and that didn't work. And um, the second time we did it, I actually took one of Coop's canes and I cut a towel and wrapped it around to make a torch for myself and went to the store, got paraffin wax, and then my roommate Nate at the time was holding a wet towel beside me, and Calico was videotaping it. And, you know, Nate was just like, don't do this, don't do this. And Calico's like, you know what? Who cares? Let's do it. Just do it. We'll throw you in the hospital. She's like the bad, Calico's like the bad angel on your other shoulder just pushing you, it sounds like. Yeah, see, you know, at first Calico's, when I'm like, I'm going to do this, she's always like, that's a bad idea. And I'm like, no, it's not. And then when we get started in the process of doing it, then she adds me on. Then she's like, yeah, just do it. I'm like, okay, fine. So I did it, and we did it in the driveway of my house, and I didn't die. And then I realized I could do it. So, and I, you know, I used way too much paraffin wax in my mouth the first time, and I blew like an eight-foot fireball, and all you hear Calico is be like, whoa, on the videotape, and I was like, whoa, I'm still alive, and then that's how I learned to do it, so I just practiced and practiced and got better, so it's just like random great. things like that that I, I've learned how to do. I went to circuit school for a little while for acrobatics, for aerial hoop. Um, I taught myself how to walk on stilts. That's another one of those times where I called Calico and I was like, hey, we got to go find drywallers stilts and I'm going to learn how to use them. She's like, all right. Cool. So that's just, you know, the random things. Um, when I was in high school, I always did drill team and dance. I was always into that. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's, that's how I learned well, how to do all of those cool things. That's a lot. The, the, the school of life, as they call it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So... You and Calico are, are best friends. Each of you brings a unique style and persona to your performances. Uh, how did you both first connect, and any plans to partner together with the two of you in the future for anything? Well, uh, with me and Calico, we met. We were actually, it's a really random story. We were both at the Rainbow Bar and Grill having dinner one night and a couple of drinks, and we had a mutual friend there that we both knew, and he introduced us. And we just stayed there and talked to her and Katie and I for like three hours about the most random junk, and we just hit it off and got along really well. And, you know, I had no idea who she was and what she did, but later on I learned um, we just became best friends, the three of us, and we're pretty much inseparable. Um, How the Cooper thing came about is Calico wanted to go pursue acting, and she didn't have anybody that she knew that could do what she does on stage. They could have had auditions, but she really wanted someone that she trusted, especially with her dad's show. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Calico only performed like once in the Cooper show. I came out one night to see her. And uh, we were doing a Jenna Torturer show. I had one booked. And anytime I ever did anything, I always called Calico. I'm like, yo, do you want to do this show with me? Because I knew she could do it. She's super talented, one of the 
most talented people I know. And so uh, we were up making costumes one night. It was like coming down to the wire. We rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. We were doing a Jenna Torture show at Ink and Iron in Long Beach in like 2009, the summer of 2009. And uh, we were up at like 7 a.m. still making stuff for the show. And she was like, hey, she was like, do you think you could do my job? And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, do you think you could do my job? And I was like, yeah. She was like, I think you could too. And she was getting a lot of offers at the time to do acting. And she would always have to leave and go on tour. So it's like every time she would come home, she would just have to restart her acting career over and lose all the steam that she was building up. And she needed someone to step in and fill in for her. So that's how that happened. And, um, yeah, she, we worked together on Jenna Tortures and NASA. I used to dance for a DJ project called NASA. Uh, we did Coachella in 09 together. Um, random Jenna Torture shows and Gen X shows, the Cooper shows we've done together. Um, also, my new project, Off With Her Head, I always call in. The first person I called when I needed a dancer was her. And so she's now my dancer for Off With Her Head <laughs> when Fantastic. she's available. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, like with your with your schedules and just coordinating all of that. What's personally your favorite part of performing live what comes natural to you, and what, if anything, are you working to improve on or introduce as part of your repertoire on stage? Okay, well, the thing about me is it's like I never – I take it really seriously, but I never try to overdo it with myself. When I'm on stage, I'm playing myself just a different side of it. Like when you see the Cooper side, I, I'm angry but very reserved at the same time and scary. I'm, You know, that's when I get mad at home. I never throw temper tantrums. That's how I usually act as like a little brat when I'm angry at home. So it's mm-hmm. like it just comes out. It just portrays well and reads well on stage. Um, as far as Jenna tortures, you just have to be a crazy person. So I'm just myself except a little bit more amped up in that show. Uh, as for the Cooper show, I'm a little bit more reserved. With Off With Her Head, um, it's my own project. So I'll, all I wanted on stage were a bunch of psycho musicians and dancers just being psychos and being their natural selves. I don't give them characters to play. I'm like, go out there, listen to the music, and do you. And it works out great. And as Alice, you know, has, has said, it's, you know, really about selling the song. It's about portraying a role within the song and, and, and bringing that presence and energy. And, you know, looking at the dancers over the years with Alice, you really bring an interesting dimension to your own personal style on stage. Of course, the uh, only one that he's had on stage that's done the uh, uh, has done the the grinder. So, how much liberty did you have with with saying, "Hey, Alice, what if, what if I do this? What if I do that?" And then, of course, you know, bringing that into the rehearsals. How how was it to rehearse? How long was that? How extensive? And you know, talk a little bit about that if you would. Um, with theater of death, what we did was is we went into rehearsals. For two weeks, we rehearsed about 12 hours a day, 12 to 14 hours a day, every day before our first show. Um, it was pretty grueling. I, I was new. I didn't know anybody. Um, but everybody accepted me and made it really cool. Calico came to rehearsals with me, so she kind of coached me and gave me pointers. And we had a great director, Rob Ross, who had already set the bar and had the script down for the show. But a lot of times when you go in with these ideas, sometimes they don't look good on stage or sometimes the timing's not right or sometimes they just don't work out. And what would happen, but for the most part, Rob nailed everything. But, you know, we would do something 20 times and then move on to the next part and it would be like, oh, that doesn't flow right. So we would just scrap it and have to start over again. Um, And that's just the way the creative process of shows like that in detail with Alice Cooper work. There's a lot of hard work and thought that goes into everything, every prop. Um, as far as the grinder goes, I brought that in from Jenna Torturers. We didn't really have a part for that in Nurse Rosetta. So I was like, what if we do this? And Coop was like, I love that. And Rob was like, I love that too. Let somebody go get her a grinder. So they went to, Pat went to Home Depot, got me a grinder, brought it back, and we rehearsed it, and everybody really liked it. And it's something that no one had seen it before as far as that crowd goes. So, that's, you know, that's it's, excellent. and Coop is always great to work with. If you ever have ideas or something cool or rad, he's always open. And if I come to him and I'm like, blah, 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 why don't we do this? He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, and we'll add this on top of it. And Rob's like, yeah, and we'll polish it off with this. So it was always really cool. 
you know, um, they're great to work with. They're so creative. And so, so I didn't really have to do a lot. I just, they told me when to go on stage and what costume I was wearing and just let me be myself. And a couple critiques here and there, and that's how we got the show. Any close calls as far as uh, injuries with the show like that? There's The stage is dark. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts. Of course, you've got things blocked and choreographed, but a live show is a live show. Anything that comes to mind that was like, well, I almost got whacked with that. Oh, that's happened a million times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. You know, Coop, you'll hear him say a million times in interviews, he's like, when you join my show, you're going to see the world, you're going to get paid, and you're going to get stitches. And those things mm-hmm. always happen to everyone. And mm-hmm. that's not a joke. Um, on that tour, I broke my foot in Germany when we were playing in Belgium on the Go to Hell part when I would run out on stage and uh, just annoy him on Go to Hell, and he would backhand me. And I flew back one night, and we had a concrete stage, and I slammed my foot down too hard and ended up breaking my foot. Another night, uh, when I was hanging him on the gruesome twosome tour, I kicked the aluminum trash can, and I kick it hard because I mean it when I'm kicking it out and under him. Um, there was a jagged point, split the bottom of my foot open, had to go to the, oh, I just ran off stage, gas taped it, and went to the emergency room. Tyler took me to the emergency room afterwards, got stitches. Um, Coop broke a couple of his fingers on that tour. Um, I'm trying to think what else happened. You know, everybody gets, like, you know, injuries as far as, like, knees or elbows or something like that or your back hurts. It's it's always something of that part. But nothing really, really serious. Yeah. And that's, like you said, that's just part of that show. It's part of what it is. How about with Jenna Tortures? Let's talk a little bit about that. And then I want to move on to talk about your own project, uh, Off With Her Head. Um, how did it come about that you got plugged into Jenna Tortures? Because there, again, is another crazy, wild stage show, as you've articulated, a different vibe, a different feel, but still, it's it's that energy, it's that uh, it's that vaudevillian type of uh, type of activity. Um, with Jenna Torturers, how did I get started with that? I met Jen like six or seven years ago through my good friend Joe Letts, who plays drums in a band called Comedy Christ, and he used to drum for Jen. And we were out in LA one night, and he was like, "Timmy's a great dancer. Just use her in your show." Because Jen has always had girls on stage, always tours with two to three performers. And she was like, yeah, let's try you out. And so she called me a month later and was like, I have a show in Dallas. She was like, are you interested in doing it? And I said, sure. So I went in there not knowing anything about the show once again. And people threw me costumes and told me to do me and do my thing and be a psycho. And and then it worked out. (laughs) And you're like, hey, this works for me. (laughs) <laughs> this works for me. People just want me to be a crazy person on stage. I don't know why, but I guess I do it well. I don't know. <laughs> so, so off with her head. Talk to me a little bit about um, about about um, how this came about. What's the role that you play? Do you play keyboards? Are you singing? What What can people expect when they come to this show? Just give me the lowdown. Okay. Well, off with her head was is I'm not really doing anything right now. I'm doing Jen shows still. Obviously, I'm not with Cooper anymore. Um, And I wanted to do something, instead of going and working for someone else this time, I wanted to try and put my own efforts into my own project. Because I always have all these ideas and I needed a creative outlet that I don't have right now. And I was like, I'll just start my own thing. I was like, let's do it. At first, I was like, we'll just DJ rad songs. I'll get two dancers and I'll bring up um, guest musicians to play on different songs and blah, blah, blah. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I actually found a really cool partner. Her name was Lisa Marks, who played guitar in Kitty and the Dear and Departed, who, amazing performer, amazing guitar player, everything. And I brought her into the mix for the first show. So it was the two of us. I hired Calico, of course, to be my dancer. I had another girl, Nikki, who used to dance for LFMAO, who's my dancer. And I just used my rad friends who are super talented musicians in Los Angeles to come up on stage and guest for like one or two songs and bail, then I would bring someone else. I brought Lacey Connor up from Nocturne. Um, John Siren plays in a band called Cycle on Nine and Dismantled. He came up to play drums. I had two of the original Murdered All members, um, Ben Graves and Eric Griffin, who are good friends of mine. They came up and helped out with the show. They're also in Davies Suicide now. Um, so I just had a ton of friends and a ton of people willing to be supportive and wanted to come up and party. So that's how it happened. And then... I ended up finding Valerie Gentile, who 
plays guitar, who's another girl guitar player who plays in Angel Spit, who's super talented once again. She's awesome. Um, so I brought her into the mix, and it's based the three girls. I do everything as far as the set list goes and all of that, and I bring them in. I bring them in, and they come up on stage and just play. It's awesome. And, yeah, we like do, as far as what I do, I do vocals, the DJing, um, playing keyboards, all of that. If you could describe the style, what how would you what would you liken it to? It's very industrial. Very, very industrial. We play it's super heavy, super dark, super industrial, but very dancey as well. Mm-hmm. And are you is your goal to to try to take this outside of Southern California? What's your vision? What does that look like? Yeah, eventually the plan is, yeah, it's to do some tours with this. So right now we have another show coming up um, on September 11th, which is actually next Tuesday, uh, playing with my roommate's new band, The Witch Was Right, and a band called Seizures from Orange County. So we're going to go do that with the lineup again. We've got a couple of different guests coming up to play live, and then we'll see what happens in the fall. I mean, I've got a couple of things in the works, a couple of tours are being talked about, so we'll see if logistics works out. Is it a collective style that you have with, with the band when it comes to writing music or coming up with ideas? What is that? How is that process for you? Well, as far as this, what we do is it's something we've never done before. It's like we play tracks of bands already, mm-hmm. and these people come up and guest over top of it. it. Essentially, it is a DJ set. I just bring a lot of live elements to it because I didn't want to be a DJ who stood back there and nothing happens at a nightclub. That's not fun for me. Mm-hmm. So I wanted all of these people to come up on stage and just rage and have a good time and play live and give everyone a good show. So that's what's it going sounds, on. It sounds like a great opportunity for you to pull in maybe a lot of the influences that you have around dance and around the club scene, but then to superimpose kind of your dark vision on top of that is kind of what it sounds like from my perspective. And that's what it is. <laughs> I want a ticket. I want a it. ticket now. I know. That's... Well, if you were in Southern California, I would say come to the show on Tuesday. If you want to fly here, you're more than welcome to come to the show on Tuesday. But How I mean, we that? should have some tours coming up at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Is what I'm looking for. That sounds fantastic. So maybe we will get to see you. Well, you know what? I think that. Um... I think that the general populace at large would like to see more of Tiffany Lowe outside of her, her role with Alice, which I think is her most notable in that regard. Um, I want to do a machine gun word association with you. I want you to tell me the first word that comes to mind. Are you ready for this? I think so. I've never done this before. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> nice. This is something you've never done before, so that makes me feel real good. All right, here's the first word, licorice. Chewing? Flower. I hate them. <laughs> Color? Black? Toy? Um, Barbie dolls? Exercise? Running? Monster? Uh, Freddy Krueger? Lace? Race? Lace, L-A-C-E. Lace, leather. Nice. I love how you answered those with a question at the end. I'm going to send these to a prominent psychologist, then I'm going to have them sealed with the responses, uh, his response clinically back to you. How about that? Oh, God. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Can't wait to hear these test results. (laughs) So, so Tiffany, what else would you like to to share with everybody who's listening in on on this uh, interview? Any final thoughts or impressions you'd like to give? You know what? Just, I was super grateful for the experience that I had with Alice Cooper and Jenna Tortures, and I really appreciate people being interested in what I do, because I always just thought of myself as being like a total nerd and doing useless things, and people actually appreciate it. So it's nothing you can really use in real life unless you're me, but, you know, I really appreciate everybody being so supportive. Tiffany, I know you don't do interviews very often. I appreciate you taking the time with me today and giving me and our listeners a little more insight on on Tiffany Lowe, who you are and what you do, and the very best to you with uh, everything uh, that you're doing and know that folks are out there watching. 
Oh, well, thank you so much. And, you know, I've known you for a couple years now, so I think that that's totally cool that you even asked me to do it. I really appreciate it, and I hope I gave you an interesting show. (laughs) Tiffany Lowe, the one, the only. Thanks so much, Tiffany, for your time.